opinion, you know, Mike wasn't all that good of a defender. Mike who? Jordan. Now all that's NBA shit. Yeah, we like Mike. We gonna put him up there. Da -da 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 -da. Left hand down for the low pass. Right hand up to challenge the shot of the overhead pass. Hurst tries to shake him with a little fake back to his left shoulder. Jordan's right there waiting, waiting. Challenge. Uh-uh. I'm not gonna shoot this one. Give it to somebody else. Maybe the best defensive guard in the NBA. The best defensive guard in the NBA. Rashid Wallace decided to air his opinion about his airness Michael Jordan. He said Mike wasn't all that good of a defender. All that's NBA sh We like Mike, we're gonna put him up there. I'm talking about being out there. I seen this motherfucker get his ass bust where he couldn't stop a mother Against J.R. Ryder, yeah, probably against Clyde Drexler. However, the two times All-Star did eventually tone down his comments. I'm not saying that he didn't play defense. I'm just saying that his defense wasn't as high as most other cats at that time. I couldn't put him on like 10 or 11 consecutive first team all defensive joints dog, he continued. I'm talking about being out there. I seen this motherfucker get his ass bust where he couldn't stop a motherfucker. Yes, Mike fouled too, but no, they're not gonna call this because the rest wanna eat his all day. Oh no, I'm not gonna call that on Mike. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rashid, you gotta calm down. We all need to come together at this point and request for a no slander against basketball legend Michael Jordan. Because what was that outrageous claim by Rashid Wallace about MJ? If anyone is to talk about Michael Jordan being a weak defender, it shouldn't be Rashid. Before Rashid grew up to be as ferocious as he was on the basketball court. He was a fearful kid while playing college basketball at the University of North Carolina. From interviews, he had admitted to not being a confident player during those days. And when Michael Jordan, who at the time was already a known talent, came to his college for a match, he ducked. Yeah, my freshman year, I remember he came to practice. It was after or before the season he had time. At first, I'm like, all right, damn Mike. And after practice as a freshman, you know you gotta get your work in. So I did that. Wallace stated remembering the game. I go into the locker room and they all playing rise and shine with Mike. So they're like, where she'd at? Where she'd at? So right out there on the floor, they're like, you wanna play one-on-one? -on -one? What? Are you all crazy? I'm not gonna sit out there and let this dude embarrass me. Yo, I can't mess with him. Cause at the time, I wasn't confident in my handle like that and I know he gonna get up in me. So I was like, you all crazy, I'll stand here and watch him kill you all. Wallace continued. Luckily for Wallace, he managed to overcome the initial pressure and enhance his skills over time. His progression from scoring 9.5 points, grabbing 6.6 .6 rebounds, and blocking 1.8 shots per game during his freshman season to putting up 16.6 .6 points, collecting 8.2 rebounds, and swatting away 2.7 shots in his sophomore campaign caught the attention of NBA scouts. This impressive improvement secured him a spot in the 1995 NBA draft, where he was selected fourth overall by the Washington Wizards, formerly known as the Bullets. Wallace got better playing basketball, and how well did he think Jordan improved? For someone who has had that experience with Jordan in high school to come and claim that Jordan was a weak defender. Can't be any greater clowning. No offense, bro. Few years down the line, Wallace played against Jordan and the Chicago Bulls for the first time in his 34th career game in the pros. He dropped 17 points and four rebounds, but lost to his fellow North Carolina alumni that day. Notably, that was also the same game Jordan scored 46 points on 51.6% shooting from the field. Man was at the peak of his prime years in the NBA. Rashid Wallace encountered Michael Jordan a total of nine times in NBA games throughout his career. And in these encounters, Michael Jordan emerged victorious in seven of those games, while Rashid Wallace won two. At this point, you can definitely tell that Rashid is just hating. A man who swept you off your feet seven out of nine times is weak. Maybe the dictionary meaning of what being a weak defender is has changed. Because man, you have got to be kidding me. And for the record, whenever Rashid faced Michael Jordan, his performance dipped below his career averages. On average, Wallace scored 12.3 points, grabbed 4.0 rebounds, and dished out 1.2 assists per game against Jordan, compared to his career averages of 13.5 points, 6.2 rebounds, and 1.5 assists per game. Moreover, Wallace's game highs of 28 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists in these matchups were lower than his career highs, which clearly shows that facing Jordan may have affected his usual level of play. So what's he saying now acting like he caged Hall of Famer Michael Jordan? Let's carefully analyze these claims by Rashid. Michael Jordan had a defensive rating of 102.7 throughout his career, proving that he had a strong defensive presence, despite being basically known for his offensive prowess. This defensive rating throughout his career places MJ among the better defenders in NBA history, which is worthy of note bearing in mind that he didn't primarily play such a position. Comparatively, LeBron James, another one of the league's greats, 
has a slightly higher defensive rating of 104.6, indicating that while both players were excellent defensively, LeBron's defensive contributions were marginally superior according to this metric. Among current players, Jonathan Isaac leads with a defensive rating of 102.1, followed closely by Jay Ian Tate and Kyle Anderson, both with ratings of 105.0 and 105.1 respectively. Rudy Gobert, a perennial defensive player of the year candidate, has a defensive rating of 106.6, showcasing his consistent excellence on the defensive end. These figures illustrate the high standard set by Jordan in the NBA. Ideally, a defensive rating in basketball statistics measures an individual player's efficiency at preventing the opposing team from scoring points. Introduced by statistician Dean Oliver, this metric is designed to quantify how many points a player allows per 100 possessions they defend. Unlike simpler metrics like plus-minus which count all points scored while a player is on the court against them, defensive rating focuses solely on points resulting from defensive lapses. This means that it accounts for steals, blocks, and an estimation of forced turnovers and missed shots that aren't officially recorded as steals or blocks. Following this metric, Michael Jordan's career statistics, including his blocks and steals, can be analyzed. In a regular season, MJ averaged 30.1 points per game in over 15 seasons. 6.2 rebounds per game, 5.3 assists per game, 2.3 steals per game, and made 0.8 blocks per game. And in playoffs, he averaged 33.4 points per game across 13 playoff appearances, averaged 6.4 rebounds per game, averaged 5.7 assists per game, averaged 2.1 steals per game, and averaged 0.9 blocks per game. In the 1991 NBA Finals, after Pippen fouled out at the end of the fourth quarter, Jordan held Magic Johnson to zero points, zero rebounds, zero assists, and one turnover in OT, as the Lakers only scored four points in the OT. 1992 Finals Drexler had 25 PPG on 40.7% FG after 25 PPG on 47% in the regular season, and most of his points did not come on Jordan. Jordan also shut down Terry Porter, who averaged 21.6 PPG with 52% FG and 47% 3PT in the 1992 playoffs. He is the only player to average average at least 15 PPG on 50% FG and 45% 3PT in an NBA Finals run. While in the 1993 Finals, which was Game 3, Kevin Johnson scored 23 points before Jordan guarded him with 7 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Johnson had 2 points the rest of the game, including the 3 overtimes. MJ has an NBA record 5 playoff runs averaging 20 PPG, 9 APG, all past the first round, and is second all-time behind Magic Johnson in playoff runs averaging 20 to 10 with 3. All of those runs were also past the first round. In the 1996 Finals, with Ron Harper's knee injury limiting him to one minute in both games 3 and 5, Jordan shut down Gary Payton in both game 3 and game 5. Payton averaged 22, 5, 7, 2 on 50% through 3 rounds in the 1996 playoffs. With all these averages and stats, it is beyond doubt that Michael Jordan has got exceptional scoring ability, but he also shows that he contributed significantly on defense in his career through his steals and blocks. These are the records that have made MJ the greatest basketball player of all time. To top it all up, Michael Jordan won the Defensive Player of the Year award once during his career. He was duly recognized in the 1987-88 season. If anyone is an overrated defender, it might be LeBron because absolutely no one is touching MJ's record, and definitely not LeBron. LeBron James does not excel at guarding positions 1 through 1 to 5 effectively. If he had the capability to guard those positions effectively, he likely would have already been named the Defensive Player of the Year, an award Michael Jordan has in his shelf of awards. While he can offer solid help defense momentarily and switch into guarding for brief periods, his inability to consistently defend positions 1 to 5 is notable. However, he can effectively guard positions 1 to 3, but inconsistently. LeBron had commented one time about his defense that's why I should be Defensive Player of the Year. 1 through 5. Started off on DeAndre, guarded Darren Collison that one possession, so you know. No one has ever done this before. However, one possession does not necessarily indicate the ability to guard positions 1-5, to five, as shown by Jordan's notable defensive plays against Shaquille O'Neal and Patrick Ewing, his blocks and steals against Kevin Willis, and Antoine Carr, his steal on Karl Malone, and his successful defensive stops against Vladi Divas, Kenyon Martin, Christian Lattner, and Charles Barkley in one-on-one -on -one situations. The legend consistently proves why he remains the greatest player of all time in the world of basketball. In summary, Rashid Wallace.